Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll be looking at AMM liquidity mining. Note that liquidity mining can be applied to any type of DeFi protocol, but it's quite prevalent on AMMs. So what is liquidity mining and where does this term mining comes from? So liquidity, as we established earlier, is basically monetary value or monetary amount, right? So this is basically the financial value. Mining, you, you're quite familiar by now with, is the process of creating something, uh, for example, extending the blockchain with, with blocks. Um, in this particular context, it's referred to as generating uh, financial revenue. So as such, liquidity mining can be seen as being equal to an incentive that's created uh, for participants to participate in a particular DeFi protocol. So there are two types of rewards in DeFi protocols, and they are mainly uh, trading fees. So if you're a liquidity provider, or also called LP, and you provide assets into a pool, right? So there's a pool of assets X and Y, and you provide some assets in there. Uh, you remember the example of Alice, and then there's Bob, who's trading here, and who will then provide a, a small fee to the liquidity pool. Uh, this is an incentive, right? So here, this, these, are, these are the trading fees that are being paid by traders to the liquidity providers. And the way that this works, this, these trading fees, is that the, this value, this, this fee here, is directly added into the pool, right? So it's being paid in either X or, or Y um, that's, that's uh, in this pool. So as such, the liquidity providers, they have, a, uh, they have an LP coin, which represents the share of the allocation in this pool. And because this pool is growing through trading fees, the percentage, um, the share of the pool remains the same, rel rel relatively speaking, right? But the absolute value of the, of the pool obviously grows and therefore the LP coins grow in value uh, through the addition of trading fees. So an example in Curve is here that the, uh, the LPs, they get 0.03% of the trading fees um, from, from the users. So in essence, you, if you're participating as an LP, in, as a liquidity provider in a, in a pool, you're, you're gaining interest on, based on the user behavior. So the more users trade, the more uh, financial value you will, uh, you will receive. The second type of reward is the so-called liquidity mining rewards. So these are rewards that uh, any protocol, DeFi protocol, can manually specify. So they can, for example, say if, if you provide a certain amount of liquidity to a pool, then the protocol, so this is actually in the, the DeFi protocol uh, instructors or developers or so, they will basically say, okay, there here, there's Alice, she provided that much liquidity. We will give her, as a reward, we will give her um, some token C, right? So this is a liquidity mining reward. And this, is, this incentive exists in order to incentivize liquidity providers to deposit more and more assets into a pool, hence attracting more liquidity, hence attracting more traders because the slippage becomes lower because the the trading, the trading volume grows and volume attracts volume in the exchange businesses. So these are the two prevalent types of uh, rewards that um, DeFi protocols are currently exerting. Uh, they may be further down the road. Uh, it would be amazing if, if you built a, a new DeFi protocol with maybe a different reward structure, a new type of reward. So uh, try to get creative here. And in general, uh, so here I have a small summary of what liquidity mining is, right? It's really an incentive to provide liquidity to a pool. So liquidity providers should be incentivized. The reward is proportional. That's very important. It's proportional uh, in terms of uh, uh, amounts of liquidity that you provide and also in terms of time, right? So if this is, the, uh, if this is a chart with a time, and the overall US dollar that you provide in liquidity, right? And the liquidity changes over time that you provide. So then the, the rewards will basically be proportional to, to, the, to the individual amounts that you had at any point in time. Um, and always in comparison, 
to the other liquidity providers that are providing liquidity. What's great about um, uh, liquidity pools in general is that you can remove and add your assets at any point in time. But this also holds for, um, for liquidity mining uh, benefits. So most of the time, and liquidity mining benefits are set for like a uh, fixed amount of time. So for example, uh, you can think of Bitcoin is actually one of the um, earliest maybe liquidity mining proposals where, uh, well, you get incentivized for, for your hash rate, not for, not, for your, for, not for your monetary amount, but there's a fixed release schedule, right? At how many tokens or how many coins uh, are being distributed over time. And uh, in some protocols, it might be removed anytime. So be aware that the incentive structures change significantly once there's less uh, liquidity mining uh, rewards. So um, what's very interesting is that there are retrospective airdrops that are possible. So I guess Uniswap is a, is a famous example. Uh, Uniswap did not have a token in the, in the early days of its protocol. Uh, then at some point in time, Uniswap introduced a token and rewarded the previous liquidity providers as well as the liquidity ta takers. So those that actually trade, uh, given the um, given the uh, uh, liquidity provided by liquidity providers. So both liquidity providers and liquidity takers uh, got incentivized to participate in this particular uh, in this pool. Um, uh, retrospectively, so that's the funny, funny, um, um, funny fact because the uh, this means uh, this this basically implies if you have an if you have an, a blockchain address that performed some interaction with some DeFi protocols, then the address history in itself is a valuable element, right? So keep that in mind. Um, instead of selling a wallet, maybe just transfer some coins to to another wallet but keep keep the wallet if that's necessary or as well if you're if you're for example running a business and your employees are managing your private keys and they send the the funds uh, later back to to some company owned account keep in mind that the address history of a wallet is valuable and the this this wallet might receive airdrops later on so um, it's very important to to keep here a, a clean tab um, of uh, what is what is owned by whom as the hist as history matters. To give you a few examples, I plotted here the screenshots of Curve and Alpha Homora. So let's go into these a bit more in detail. So you can see here in Curve, uh, the first example is the tree crypto pool, which has three assets, right? There's the USDT, the wrapped Bitcoin and the wrapped Ether. Um, so basically this pool has three assets and this is actually one of the few pools in Curve that, that has non-correlated or uh, non-packed assets. Um, there's a base APY, so APY stands for annual percentage yield, APY of 3.73%, right? So this is at this very point in time, if, if we, we keep this state for a year and if you deposit some of your coins, you will get this interest rate. And then, so this is the uh, this is the base APY based on the uh, trading fees, right? This is calculated uh, on the expected trading fees that, that happened in, in a past time frame. Um, and in addition, you get a reward API um, APY. So this can uh, this can be between two and five percent, and this is being paid out in Curve. So the the base APY is paid out in LP tokens. Uh, of the respective pool, while the reward APY is paid out in Curve, right? So these are actually exactly the these two types of coins, uh, these two type of rewards that we discussed in, in the earlier slide. Now, why does the reward here change from two to five? Well, this basically it's due to the uh, Curve model because Curve um, incentivizes its users to lock Curve token in their platform. The more Curve you lock in a particular, uh, over a particular time frame, and depending on the pool states, you might get between two and 5% APY here. The trade volume is basically the amounts of US dollar 
of daily trade volume that's going through this pool. So you can see some of these pools are, are quite higher with 120 million. Um, while the base API is, is relatively small. So you might ask why that's the case. So this basically depends also on the size of the pool. So the three pool is in particular relatively large. I'm not uh, aware of the exact numbers there at this particular stage, but the, uh, the, um, the base API doesn't necessarily have to correlate to the volume. So if the pool is very small, um, uh, or you are, you are, um, yeah. So it basically depends depends on the on the volume, on the pool size, and also on the on the fee settings that are set for the default pool. So an additional interesting element that you can see here is that there's a uh, for the SUSD market there's an incentive mechanism uh, paid in SNX. Um, so there's no range because SNX will not be locked in the system here. So it's a, just a fixed liquidity mining reward. Um, and you basically, so the overall API, uh, APY that you get is 0 0.5 plus whatever you get in between this range plus this 1.78. So this is your overall APY that you get for this, for this particular case. Now, some of these uh, pools have a significantly higher APY. So here you can see the TBTC pool goes up to 34% uh, paid out in curve tokens. Uh, so you might want to be careful. So ideally the market is balancing out the importance or the, the danger, the risks of a pool. So I haven't seen yet any study uh, being performed on the efficiency of these liquidity mining allocations based on the risk profile of the particular pool. I think that's, uh, that would be quite excellent future work. So feel free to, to propose this also in the, in the MOOC, maybe as a project or something. Um, that's, that's really, it's really, uh, it's really an interesting uh, future avenue. And then we have on the right side, we have Alpha Homora. Alpha Homora is actually a leverage platform. So it's quite different from Curve. It's operating very, very differently. And here you have a you have an interesting um, you have uh, you have uh, you have several actually uh, APYs that that you can uh, that you can you, that you can get. So you get the you get some yield farming APY. You you get um, trading fees. You get a token release as well, and you have to pay because you're, you're taking leverage in this particular platform. So you have to pay a borrow APY. So it's basically the sum of all these three sums then up to your particular APY that you, that you may get um, if you extend the instantaneous APY over a year. So I hope this helps you to, to get some insight um, into, into uh, yield farming or liquidity mining protocols. Thank you very much for your attention. As before, feel free to try it out in practice. Just be aware that if you set a leverage multiplier on these uh, liquidity mining platforms that might be too high, you might get liquidated very easily. We'll discuss this in detail in the lending and borrowing lecture.